Hey everyone, Itai Manero here, and in this video I'm going to draw this illustration using each one of my brushes from the comic book artist brush set for Procreate. So let's jump right into it. <coughs> the comic book artist brush set for Procreate includes 44 brushes at the moment, and you can also download a free mini version from my Gumroad page. The links are in the description below. So for this video I wanted to do something a little bit different and instead of swatching all the brushes first and do an illustration later, I'm going to go brush by brush drawing some characters and sharing my thoughts on each brush, explaining what I would use them for, etc. Here we go! Natural Pencil is the first brush in the list, and fun fact, this was the first custom brush I've ever made in my life. I think it was around 2017 or something. It all started because I wanted to see if I could do a brush using real pencil marks on a piece of paper for the brush shape and for the texture. I remember that I took a photo of those marks with my iPad's camera at the time, and I was very surprised that I could actually make the brush exactly how I wanted. This is a very nice brush for sketching and directly adding some shading by tilting the Apple Pencil. Little Humanoid Pencil is a pencil brush that I'm very proud of, and it is one of my most favorite pencil brushes I've ever made. If you look at the brush itself, the stamp has the shape of a little human. I don't know why I did that, but what I know is how nice it feels to sketch with this brush. It is extremely responsive, and it feels very organic and sharp at the same time. You can also do some shading with it by tilting the Apple Pencil. I love this brush for sketching characters. The name of Rough Pencil is quite self-explanatory. If you are after a pencil brush that feels extremely realistic, just like a true pencil on paper, this is your brush. It is super rough and great for loose sketching. I would mostly use this brush for a very loose penciling before inking. Oh, and yeah, you can also use Tilt with this one. Soft Pencil is a similar concept to the previous one, but the line work you can do with it is a little more defined. The strokes are going to be darker and a bit denser too. There is tilt too. Yeah, basically all my pencil brushes have tilt. I think it is an important feature for any pencil brush. Charcoal Shader is an interesting one. You probably won't use this one for anything that needs to be very defined. This is mostly for a very light initial sketch, where you are searching your shapes, proportions, etc. before going in with other brushes. Double Line Sketch is a versatile brush. Sometimes I'll use it for a sketchy line work, but other times I will do the final inking with it. I tend to like inking brushes that aren't purely opaque, and this one is very nice for that. It resembles a felt tip marker or like a sharpie that is running out of ink. Sketch Plus Texture is great for sketching. It really has a nice sketchy quality to the lines you can do with it. But the best part for me is that when you tilt the Apple Pencil, you get this interesting and very distinctive fabric texture that it can be great for shading or giving some quick coloring in a layer underneath the line art. Please ignore the fact that this next brush is called the Ink Plus Texture 1 on my screen right now. You should find it as Ink Plus Texture in the set. If you're looking for a more classic digital inking experience, this brush is for you. It is very opaque and has a very nice chisel shape. It really makes the inking experience feel very organic, and I love it. Thank you. 
Bad Photocopy is an amazing brush if you want to give your inking a distressed look, more like an inking brush with old bristles. It is a very fun brush. Snappy is probably my favorite inking brush, when I need to be able to do thick lines as well as thin lines, almost without having to change the brush size slider. It is very easy to control the thickness of your lines with this brush, just by using the pressure sensitivity. And it is also great for doing some hatching lines, because it is very easy to make the end of the lines very thin and pointy. Smooth Inker is awesome. You can really do some inking with this brush with a lot of personality in the strokes. I just love how sometimes you'll get a little bit of texture in the edges of your lines. It feels very much like inking with real pens. Clean lines will give you a similar inking experience, but if you're not into having random textures showing up in your strokes, this is your brush. But if you are open to experiment with some texture in your line art, check out this brush, Line Plus Dots. I'd say it's pretty unique, because it will show some negative dots of different sizes inside your lines, making the lines look just a little bit broken here and there, making it a pretty fun brush for inking. In this set, you will also find other types of brushes, like for example this dense marker. It is a pretty realistic marker brush that you can use for shading or coloring in a layer below your line art. This one behaves like a real marker would, and if you lift the Apple Pencil and pass over the same area, it will darken the colors a little bit, giving you that characteristic marker texture. Burned Marker is similar, but it builds the marker texture without even having to lift the Apple Pencil, and it is also a more subtle texture as you can see here. And Marker Filler is the last marker brush included so far in this set. If you want a more subtle marker brush that doesn't add that much texture, check this one out. Picelli Filler is another brush you can use for filling in colors manually and quickly add some textured color to your line work. I really like the texture in this one, it feels very organic, like a very thick noise. Heavy filler is similar to the previous one, but the texture is way more subtle until it even disappears if you press hard enough, but you still get some texture by pressing lightly and not trying to fill every single pixel in your image. Fun fact about this next brush called Sea Hair Brush, it's actually made out of a photo of a chair. It's funny because the result is that this is probably the most awesome brush when it comes to shading hair. Double Mess is another brush that you can really use for sketching or a very loose inking for an interesting look. I'm sure you can find a lot of uses for this double clean brush. It's basically a brush that draws two parallel lines at the same time, one being a little thicker than the other. It could be useful if you are drawing zippers or details in clothing, maybe some details on hard surface objects that could use some parallel lines without having to draw them one by one. I'm just using it here to quickly draw some trees and branches. The same thing goes for this triple clean brush, the only difference is that it draws three parallel lines instead of two. Split is a brush that could be used in a similar manner as the previous two brushes, but maybe in a more organic way. I guess you could use it for inking some hairlines without having to draw hair by hair. Bleeder is a very fun inking brush. 
If you like more mid-century inking brushes, this is the one for you. It has a very nice tooth to it, and it is a brush that has life of its own. You have to let it do its thing and be okay with it, and allow yourself to be surprised with the results. Blotch is a nice inking brush that has the stamps of the brush more separated between them, so it can give you a different feeling when you are using it. It is also great for doing bold and confident line work. If you are into inking with sharpie pens or things like that, I think you'll like this fountain brush. It has almost no pressure sensitivity, which means the line is going to keep a very consistent thickness all the time. You can of course change the size with the brush slider to get different thicknesses, but if you want to play safe or you just like this specific aesthetic, then this brush is what you're looking for. The same for this technical brush. The difference with the previous brush is that this one has softer edges and it can feel more rough if you like that little touch. Runny also has very soft edges, but here we recover the pressure sensitivity to control the thin to thick line work. But if you really really want some soft edges in your line art, then use this soft edges brush. It totally feels like a felt tip pen that has the tip in its final hours. Sometimes I'll use this brush when I want to feel the freedom of not having to be perfect with my lines, which is nice from time to time to experiment with. Speaking of experiments, Broken Line is a very experimental brush, but I like it. It allows you to do some really broken line work that can add a lot of personality to your style when inking. Maybe I wouldn't use this one for everything, but for some details here and there it is nice. Dotted is another brush that you will probably not want to use for everything, but it can be great for adding some details here and there in your drawing. It allows you to basically draw a line of irregular dots that are very close together. The Crackle brush is inspired by the classic and famous Crackle inking effect that Jack Kirby used to draw. If you're drawing comics, you need to have this brush in your arsenal. Another brush that can be very useful if you want to give your drawing the feeling that it was made using traditional inks is the fine splatter brush. You can use it to add some fine splats of ink here and there that look very nice, but I recommend to use this one with moderation. Heavy grain is great for adding some texture when you need to cover big areas and you don't want those areas to look boring. Deep grain is similar, but the texture is a bit different. I like to experiment with this kind of brushes and I think they can look great for quickly shading or coloring a character in a layer below the line art. With the comic hatching brushes, you can quickly add that classic comic book hatching to the edges of your lines. It looks great and thanks to these digital brushes you can do it in no time, instead of having to draw line by line manually, which is awesome if you ask me. There is 5 different brushes of this kind in this set with different styles of hatching. And finally, a brush set for drawing comics couldn't be complete without some half-tone brushes. There is four different ones included in this set with different dot densities and sizes. You can quickly add some classic comic book textures to your drawings using these brushes. Well, this is the whole set overview. I hope you liked the brushes and my little explanations on what I would use each one for. If you liked it, subscribe for more videos and give me a thumbs up. Make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find the comic book artist brush set for Procreate and many other sets and freebies that I have available. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.